Hello everyone, so it's been a few weeks since I posted the video asking for questions from you guys. So we're going to go ahead and go through all the questions. There are a lot of good questions. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first we have Tomorrowland who asks four different questions. Uh, first is rates for freestyle and rates for racing, please. So uh, I don't race... So I don't have rates for those, but for freestyle, I am on beta flight and it's 1.3 on RC rate for everything, 0.75 on super rate for everything, 0.2 on expo for pitch and roll and zero expo for yaw. Um, so that's why I like to fly. You can try it if you want, but rates are kind of a very personal thing. So just because they work for me, they're not necessarily going to work for you. So his second question, why 6 inch and not 5 inch? Uh, I could probably make a whole video about this. But basically, I really like the feel of 6 inch. It's a lot more grippier. It cruises faster. Uh, it's more efficient, I find. Um, it's not quite as responsive, but it's responsive in a different way because of all that grippiness. And it's got more low end. Um, whereas 5 inch, you kind of have to rev it out more um, and I can carry more weight so I like that as well recently because I just started using the GoPro Hero 6 instead of the Session 5 so I just like 6 inch a lot it works for me but it's not def it's it's definitely not for everyone but I recommend if you've never tried it you should probably try it out third question how long do you fly quads so I have been flying quads for around two years but I've been flying RC in general for a very long time uh, I'm not sure how long but much longer than I've been flying quads so a lot of guys start out with the quads and they've been flying for a long time as far as quads go because they haven't been around too long but they haven't been flying like fixed wing and whatnot for that long and for Butterflight or Betaflight, I have not tried Butterflight um, because there was just a lot of hype about it for a while. So I try to avoid all the hype, so I haven't tried it. And it didn't even look very different in terms of what features it had. And firmware doesn't really make you fly any better anyways, so I can't really answer that question. Um, so those are his four questions. So next up, Garden Flyer says, will the Trick Series return? So the Trick Series didn't go anywhere. I just haven't made one recently, but don't worry. There's still more coming. I've just been making a lot of other videos that I wanted to get out. And uh, I've been kind of busy with school. But now it's summer, and hopefully we'll, or you guys will be seeing a lot more of those videos in the future. So don't worry, it didn't go anywhere. Um, but I know those are very popular, so don't worry, they are coming. Uh, Denver Valdez says, what is your rates? I already answered that. Uh, David Mario Ramos says, how to get better video? Because every YouTube video I watch, people seem to be able to go so far away and still get good video feed. While when I go out and fly, even though I'm on 600 milliwatts and trying multiple frequencies uh, and using Ayamway commanders with diversity and two antennas, one good patch, and an Omni. I can't go that far away. For me, clearly video is the limitation, not transmitter, which means it would be pointless to get a TBS crossfire module. So basically he's asking how to get better video. I looked up the Ayamway commanders and they're not like a mainstream goggle, so I'm not really sure the quality of the receivers in that goggle. So that can be a big thing is the sensitivity of the receivers that you're using so like the LaForge, the Clearview, all these fancy smancy diversity modules that go in fat sharks they are very sensitive and that can give you a lot more range um, I would guess that the ones in the Aomway commanders are not as good I don't even have like dominators or anything I run the attitude V3s, no, V2s, they're really old, and I know the receiver in that isn't that good either, so honestly, I don't have that good video. But he also says uh, people seem to be able to go so far away, and I think that's interesting because the GoPro makes it look like you're flying really far away even when you're not. 
Also, 5.8 is not an ideal frequency to be getting good range on. Lower frequencies get better range. Um, I could probably make a whole video talking about free video frequencies, receivers, antennas, etc. Um, I will mention IB Crazy, who has been designing antennas for a long time, um, and he's the guy behind Video Aerial Systems. He made a really good video recently about just antenna orientation on the quad, and it was just very interesting, like how big of a difference it makes having the antenna on your quad and on your goggles oriented the correct direction. So you should check that video out. Um, it was very interesting how big of a difference it made. But yeah, there's so many different factors that go into video and whatnot, and some sometimes it just comes down to people are good at flying with bad video. So if you've seen like Steele's videos on, I think it was modules um, for his goggles. Like the video is like breaking up a lot, but he's like, this is still good enough to fly. And then, you know, for uh, plebes like us, it's probably not good enough. So sorry, I can't really answer that question directly. There's a lot of factors. Um, my general solution is just fly closer to you. That's what I like to do because it's just more fun anyways. KOP or COP FPV says, do you ever break arms on your custom frame? So initially I was using the one millimeter wall thick tubes and I broke those twice before I went to the two millimeter thick tubes and I split where the bolt holes are on the inside once by going really fast into a picnic table but I think that's to be expected of really any frame. And other than that, I haven't had any problems. And I actually am still running that same arm. I just uh, wicked some CA back into the fibers and I'm just still using it. So he asked another question. Would you think about getting your frame design manufactured for sale? I think that'd be really cool. But honestly, right now the design is made so that it is easy to build from scratch not with like a cnc so that would require a lot of different design but it would be cool to get it like manufactured so i can really share it with more people but right now it's not really a priority but maybe eventually <laughs> chocolate says your process on how to tune a quad especially with by blades with or without filters and which one how to get rid of vibrations. Um, and he has another question, but we'll do the first one. So basically how to tune a quad. I can make a whole video on this. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I'll just say what filters I use. I use the dynamic filter on Betaflight. I have no notch filters running. I have a low pass filter. I think I turned it up to maybe like 100 or 110 hertz and it's worth mentioning that I soft mount my motors and my flight controller but yeah I will say at least before when there weren't as good six inch props around it was definitely a lot harder to get vibes out of a six inch but honestly ever since the tube quad it's really stiff which helps with vibrations uh, the flight controller doesn't care about them as much with a stiff frame I can make a whole video about that as well talking about frame vibrations but I haven't had any tuning problems. It's just like the same processes for any other quad, but I don't want to like make an hour long video here. So I'm not going to go too into it, but let me, let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, like a video on any specifics of any of these questions. Also, I will mention like the easiest thing to try to get rid of vibrations is put fresh props on your quad because that will solve it like 80% of the time if you're running older props. And the second question, do you change your FPV cam angle depending on flights and how much angle do you often fly? Thanks. Um, no, I keep my cam angle constant because I always fly freestyle and it's around 30 degrees. Alan H says, hello, Timmy. Simple question from a beginner's point of view. Number one, what to adjust in beta flight for prop wash? I can't answer that because I don't adjust anything to try to get rid of prop wash. I just fly to avoid it, but I will say 6 inch has less prop wash than 5 inch, I have noticed. I think that's because the props aren't loaded up as much, so they don't stall as easily. And 
two, what to adjust to reduce motor temp in beta flight. Usually that is a D term problem. So turning down your D term or turning up your D term filter um, can solve that. Or if you're running PIDs that are too high in general, but uh, black box is a really good thing to look at for that. And also if you're just going hard or your motors are high KV or you're running heavy props, especially on high KV, that can just make your motors hot as well. And that's just to be expected. So it could be a physical thing with your setup. But yeah, you can also mess with timing settings in BL Heli to make your, it'll basically make your motors less powerful. Uh, I'm gonna botch this Frantis Secno Hedgel. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I am planning to hook up two 4S 1300s in parallel to get some amps for my 7 inch in parentheses Gemfan 7042, so those are props he's running. I am using R4, so Returner R4, 2300 kV motors, and it swings 7 inches like nothing, perhaps too high kV for this setup. Uh, well, if it swings 7 inches like nothing, then I guess it's not too high kV, just as long as your motors aren't getting hot with the way you're flying. I would say that's fine because that's really the only way you can damage a motor is by overheating it. Aaron Tess says, I would like more info on, okay, another multi-part question, uh, part one, rates for action cam and rates without. So I already went over that. I always run an action cam. Two, what, if any, anti-gravity gain are you using? I don't use anti-gravity gain, so there you go. Three, would really like it if you could revisit the trick series and slow down the video speed so you can explain in more detail what the stick movements are. Um, I'm probably not going to revisit any of those videos, sorry. But the whole point of the advanced trick series was that it's more advanced and I wanted them to be short. So if I go down and I start breaking it down, editing it up, going like doing the trick, then doing it back in slow motion, it's a lot more editing for me and it also makes the video a lot longer. So what I would su just suggest, if you guys want to see the trick in slow motion, you can just click the little gear icon at the bottom right hand corner of YouTube and you can change the speed from there and you can slow it down so you can see the stick motions. Um, Cause I, I do agree some of the tricks are hard and you uh, really do want to see the sticks in slow motion. Um, if you're not a super advanced pilot, or if it's just not clicking with you. Um, so I would just recommend using that, but I'm probably not going to go remake the videos that I already made, uh, so sorry. Teresa Salazar says, what's your current setup? So uh, it's, the, it's in the description of um, all my videos where I fly it, and it is the tube quad that I built from scratch, and I have whole videos on that, and it has, uh, right now I'm running the Avan 6 inch props. Brother Hobby Returner R3, 2206, 2140 KV motors. Uh, the Hobby Wing stack, TBS Unify Pro, the Lumineer Dum Dum antenna, Runcam Micro Swift 2, the Lemon RX diversity satellite, battery is a China Hobby Line 1300, 4S, 70C, and I run the GoPro Hero 6 as my action camera. And I think that's it. Copter Dude says, okay, so here's my question. Do you still fly DLG? I mean, I know you have an F3K, so I assume with a model like that, you probably haven't stopped completely, but, but like, do you still fly DLG a lot or just drones now? I still do fly DLG a lot, but not recently because it's been cold and windy. When the weather's nicer and there's a lot more thermals, I will fly my DLG. It's right there. Um, it's the Snipes, uh, short nose, light wing. Yeah, let me know if you want to see more content on that as well. And last question, M underscore FPV Detroit, M underscore FPV Detroit. How are you so smooth? I never see prop wash with you. So like I said, six inch helps with prop wash, but also I just, I never just jam the throttle. I'm always smooth with how I apply it and I don't descend into my own prop wash strategically so that I don't really get prop wash. It's not really, it doesn't have to do much with my setup. 
or how I tune it, I don't tune it that much. And I definitely do not tune to try to get rid of prop wash. But the 6 inch does what it does. And other than that, it's just my flying style is I try to fly pretty smooth. So that's uh, all the questions. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this kind of video because we can go ahead and do more. And if you liked it, just go ahead and leave some more questions. And I'll just gauge the feedback and I'll just go ahead and make another one of these if I get a bunch more questions. And if not, that's fine as well. I'll be doing all kinds of other videos uh, and the advanced trick series will be. They will be coming out, so don't worry. Uh, like I said, also, let me know in the comments if you wanted to see a video going more in depth about like some of these questions. Because like I said, I don't want to spend a ton of time answering some of the more complicated questions that could be like a whole video themselves. I think that's it. So uh, as usual, please like this video if you liked it and get subscribed to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.